Hi, I'm Bobby Pierre with Tap Into, and I'm sitting here with Anthony Camelli, the CEO of FACT. Welcome, Anthony. Thank you, Bobby. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'm really excited to talk to you because there's so many resources available to people, and I want this information to get out. Um, you are based out of Union County, and right. I would love to know more about what is FACT. Definitely. So FACT stands for Families and Community Together. Uh, we are the designated CMO or care management organization for Union County. Uh, we are a private nonprofit, but we are part of the children's system of care. Uh, we have a contract with the state of New Jersey to provide wraparound care management services to the children and families of Union County. Um, there are 15 CMOs in total in New Jersey. Every county has a CMO designated towards it. Right, so FACT's goal is to provide care management and wraparound services to children ages five up until the 21st birthday. So what a CMO does is when a family comes to us, they are assigned a care manager. The care manager is really gonna serve as that family's point person or the person who's gonna help them navigate the entire children's system of care. Okay. Our care manager will go in, they'll meet with the family and they'll really help them identify what are the strengths of the family kind of what's been going on, what have the challenges been, and to start helping them identify a team they can build around them. Once we get that team in place, the child family team, we really start focusing on the plan for the family to help them achieve their goal. But one of the things that makes, I think, the CMOs different is that instead of going in and telling the families what they need to do, we really want to put the family's voice first and foremost. So we want to hear from the family what works for them, what doesn't because we wanna build that plan based on their strengths so they can be successful. Um, the families that we work with and the children we work with, they might be experiencing challenges with anything from behavioral to mental health, substance use, developmental disabilities. I, I really say if, if your child is experiencing some sort of challenges or behaviors, it's always worth it to reach out to the system to see if your child qualifies for care management services. And do you work directly with schools? So how yeah. do these families learn about FACT? So FACT and the CMOs, I, I feel it's one of New Jersey's uh, best kept secrets. So we've been around as part of the Children's System of Care for over 20 years now. Wow. Um, families can call Perform Care. They are the contract assistance administrator. They serve as the front door for the system of care. Um, to get access to services like ourselves. There's other services within the system of care, um, but that's the first step. Um, we do work directly with the schools. We work with really anyone who is involved and important in that child's life. We want them as part of the team. So it's easy to bring in the paid professionals, right? The schools, if there's court involvement, um, DCP and P involvement, we want them all at the table but we really wanna help also the family identify who those more natural supports are, those informal supports, the people who are not paid to be involved in their lives, but are involved because they care. Okay. And those are the folks that are really gonna be most important to building that team around that family. But the key to the care management organization is really to bring all the players who are involved with the family to one place so the family can have one meeting and one plan to address their needs. And that would be you. Yes. And you have relationships with all the other, I guess, uh, people that are involved in the care. Yeah, so that's, that's one of the first things we do too when we go out to meet with the family, we start asking them about any other involvement they may have. So if there is DCPMP involvement, um, we ask about that and we get a release by the, from the family to reach out to them to invite them to, part of, to the child family team meetings to become part of the process. So, our system partners like DCP and P, the courts, the schools, they are very familiar with us. So they know how to access the services. I think, I think a lot of families out there don't know who we are because a lot of times, if you don't need us, you might not have the need to reach out to find out who we are. Um, but referrals need to come from the uh, parent or the guardian. Okay. Now, um, I hate this word, yeah. but how has the pandemic impacted your getting out there to help yeah. these people? Yeah, so um, the pandemic definitely changed things for everyone. Um, thankfully for us, we didn't really miss 
miss a beat. Um, we were considered essential employees, so we continue okay. to work with our families. The one thing we did change was traditionally all our meetings, our visits, and our services occurred face to face. You know, we our goal is to go where it's most convenient for the family. So if the family says, "Hey, you know, we can meet," but 5.30 on a Thursday, because you know we're at work, my child's in school, we'll go to the family's home at 5.30 on a Thursday to have that meeting. But okay. with the pandemic, especially in the early days, we started using telehealth to engage with the families. And for our families who didn't have the means or capabilities um, to participate via telehealth, we used our funding and our services to make sure we got them the equipment and the technology they need so they could participate. And that's that would really be the only difference. I mean, our service, like many others, went to in-person to virtual. Um, but since we're, what, two years into the pandemic and we know more today than we did before, we have started going out to see the families in person again. Um, once again, it's always, always based on the family's choice. But we really want to be out there face to face with the families because that's where we feel we start really building the relationships best. So when a family is in need, they call you and then you work with them. It could be multiple years, correct? Right, correct. So families typically, I would say length of stay with the CMO can range anywhere from three to six months on the short end to a year and a half, if not more. Um, you know, our goal is really to kind of identify, like I said, the needs of the family and what are the resources and services available in that child and family's community to wrap around that family. Um, so that way they're not having to be involved with the CMO forever. We, we kind of want to work ourselves out of a job with the families where yeah. they know where to go for whatever needs they have. Um, some of our families, especially some of our families um, where the child has developmental disabilities, since those are kind of lifelong challenges, we will stay with those families longer. Oftentimes we stay with them until they age out of the children's system of care um, and we help them get connected to the adult system. Um, now, the one thing I just do wanna clarify is families can't get connected to us by calling us directly. Okay. They can't call FAC to say, can you open us to, the, to you guys? They have to go through Perform Care. Um, their number is 1-877. 652-7624, and they would go through a triage process, and if they meet the clinical criteria, then they would be connected to the care management organization. Great. But they might not necessarily get a CMO. They might be get connected to a mobile response service. Um, they might be referred to follow up with some outpatient services. Uh, so we do not control the referrals. Um, okay. We we check every day and we see the list of children who've been assigned to us through perform care. And if someone hears about fact, can yeah. they call that number and say that, I believe that that fact is the right choice to manage our care? Well, so based, it's gonna be based on the county of residence for that family, so which CMO they would be open to. Okay. Now, if the family has questions, they can definitely call us directly. Um, our direct number is 908. 789-8500. They can contact us also through our website, which is factnj.org. And we would definitely um, love to answer any questions they would have about the process of getting connected. Um, we've even helped families, you know, held their hand through the process when they do call Perform Care, because it can be a challenging call at times. You know, the family might be in crisis and might need that support. So we're willing to do that if the families do call us directly. Um, and even if a family is not necessarily looking for CMO services, but just want some help, one of the other things we do as the CMO, um, we run another website. It's called unionresourcenet.org. And it's free to anyone and everyone. And it really lists all the different resources and supports available in Union County. So it's everything from where your local community food bank is, to support groups, to art therapy, uh, homeless shelters, really you name it. And that's not just for children, that site kind of covers services for all ages. That's great. And this is the information I'm very happy to help 
spread the word because these resources are very important, especially Definitely. during such crisis times. And it's the, the cold outside as well. I mean, you yeah. might And for anyone too, who's listening to this, who might not be a Union County resident and you're wondering what CMO serves your county. Um, so all the CMOs together uh, have a website. It's called njcmo.org. And on that website, you'll be able to find a little bit more information about the CMOs, who we are and what we do. But most importantly, you'll be able to identify if you are outside of Union County, which CMO serves your county. Great. Well, thank you for all this information. And I look forward to future conversations with you. Definitely. Thank you, Bobby. I appreciate your time today.